Okay, I got technology happening this morning. It's got to give me, there, got it. <laughs> um, so welcome. Um, in your bulletin, there is going to be an announcement about pastoral care and outreach team has set an outreach project starting next week. Continuing till the end of July, there's a, uh, a list of all the items that would uh, go very well for this uh, outreach. Um, and um, speaking of your bulletin, have you looked at it yet? Have you checked out the definition of a bulletin? It's either something you read while I talk, it can be used as a fan in churches without air conditioning, or it can be your receipt for attending the service. When Adrian asked me to uh, stand before you today, she mentioned that some churches recognize what's known as Holy Humor Sunday on a Sunday that follows Easter, though you can do it anytime. It gives us the opportunity to set aside a Sunday to celebrate God's gift of laughter and joy. It's funny, when the subject came up at one of our board meetings, the first thing asked was, is Scott going to be involved? Um, you'll have to wait and see. So when I researched, or should I say Googled Holy Humor Sunday, I found out that this special day has a long and rich history in many congregations around the world. Churches back in the 15th century Bavaria used to celebrate this Sunday after Easter as God's joke or the Easter laugh. Priests would deliberately include funny stories and jokes in their sermons with hopes to make their congregations laugh. And after the service, people would gather to play practical jokes on each other, tell funny stories, enjoy great food, and just come together as a family. It was their way of celebrating the resurrection of Jesus the supreme joke that God played on the angel of death by raising Jesus up from the dead. Unfortunately, the powers that be came along and outlawed this celebration 200 years later. Question is, why? Well, maybe people were just having too much fun in church. And it's only in the past 40 years or so that this idea of celebrating Holy Humor Sunday was resurrected, shall we say. So let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship. The hymn of the ages, the hope of all the world. 
You carried our redemption on your shoulder. You're the anthem of salvation, Jesus, Lord of Lords. Your legacy will echo through the ages. We raise the never-ending song, the greatest song we've ever known. The song of angels, the hymn of angels, holy is the Lord. We praise the never-ending one, the greatest joy we've ever known. All hail King Jesus, forever glorious, holy is the Lord. You're the hymn of the ages, the hope of all the world. You carry our redemption on your shoulders. You're the anthem of salvation, Jesus, Lord of Lords. Your legacy will echo through the ages. Your legacy will echo through the ages. Please join me with our call to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice. Let us celebrate with holy humor. Let us sing praises and joy. As the psalmist writes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us sing. Please stand if you are able. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that our God has made. That our God has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that our God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that our God has made. Open to us. Open to us your gates, O oh God, your gates, O oh God. We will go in, we will go in to your holy place, to your holy place. Open to us your gates, O oh God. We will go in to your holy place. Open to us, open to us your gates, O oh God. You are our God. Chuckling, chortling God, 
who lifts our hearts when we are most down, who strikes the light of joy in the midst of despair's gloom, who surprises us with wonder and awe. Enter into our hearts this morning, we pray. Open our minds to the endless possibilities you create for growing closer to you with the giggle. <clears throat> Open our eyes to your presence in all things, allowing us to respond in joy. Amen. Take it away, Scott. I'm not sure what you're expecting, but here goes. And don't blame it on me. <clears throat> a fisherman and his wife were blessed with two sons. They named the boys Towards and Away. Because when they were infants, one of the boys would always turn towards the sea, while the other boy would always face inland. It didn't matter which way the parents positioned the boys, the same child always faced the same direction. The years passed and the boys grew. The day came when the fisherman said to his sons, boys, it's time that you learned how to make a living from the sea. And the boys and their father provisioned their ship, said their goodbyes and set sail for a three month voyage. The three months passed quickly for the fisherman's wife, yet the ship had not returned. Another three months passed and still no ship. Finally, after three whole years passed, the grieving woman saw her husband walking slowly down the lane toward her house, alone. Goodness, she said, what's happened to my darling boys? What happened to towards and what happened to away? The ragged fisherman told this story. We were barely a day out to sea when towards hooked into a great fish. Towards fought long and hard, but the fish was more than his equal. For a whole week they wrestled upon the waves without either of them letting up. Yet eventually, the great fish started to win the battle and towards was pulled over the side of our ship and he was swallowed whole. And we never saw the great fish or towards again. Oh dear, said the wife, that must have been terrible. What a huge fish that must have been. And the fisherman repi replied, yes, it was, but you should have seen the one that got away. <sighs> yes, he's involved. Our scripture reading today is a familiar one. It's taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. <clears throat> a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. May God add his blessings to these words. Amen. If you are able, let's stand for this next hymn. Sing a happy hallelujah.
Sing a happy hallelujah. Sing it out with heart and style. We're the echo of God's laughter. We're the image of God's smile. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. We're the proof of God's good humor. We're the twinkle in God's eyes. May to shine reflect the glory. Given light and space to find. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Sarah laughed at God's good timing. Mary sang and David danced. Jesus smiled and hugged the children. So is life for us enhanced. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation. Hallelujah, everyone. Every day sing hallelujah. We are loved, though so absurd. Human foolish chosen people, God still takes us at our word. Hallelujah, all creation, hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, all creation, hallelujah, everyone. Did you know that there is not one reference in the Bible that we use today where Jesus laughed or smiled? We know that he was thoughtful, driven, a great storyteller. We know he got angry. We know he cried. But did he ever smile or chuckle or break out in laughter? Because Jesus was just as human as we are. We love to laugh. I'm thinking he did too. But we are so used to hearing and seeing Jesus as this somber, serious, getting down to business kind of man. Many paintings have depicted that. We forget this picture. The laughing Christ. Hugh Farquhar, one of my professors, describes Jesus in this image as this. It honors what the gospel tells us that the central figure of the Christian faith is a joyful Jesus, one who spoke of his own joy and of his own desire to transmit that joy to others. His vibrant spirit shines through the pages of the Gospels. We have been conditioned not to expect Jesus as having a sense of humor, so we don't look for it. We don't look for it. So true, isn't it? Remember Jesus' first miracle? Jesus and his disciples were invited to a wedding. Family, friends, and neighbors gathered together to celebrate a momentous occasion. Now, how do you picture Jesus in this setting? Is he bored? Does he just sit there, arms crossed, furrowed browed, and scowling? Well, the story doesn't tell us. You've been to weddings and a dinner and or luncheon after the ceremony. There's always food, especially dessert, music, laughter, smiles, and can't forget those sweet, angelic children running around at times causing havoc. I'm thinking Jesus would have enjoyed himself, don't you? Singing, laughing, maybe even kicking up his heels in a dance or two. The fact that when asked secretly to help, he was able to do so while keeping the festivities going without the master of banquet even suspecting anything was wrong. 
quietly without a fuss. The water turned into wine, changing an unfortunate event into something sparkling, colorful, and vibrant. In Matthew 19, we read, Then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus then says, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Well, there must have been something about Jesus that parents, especially moms, trusted and respected. Do you think they would have brought their children to him if he was a solemn, gruff, a sour-looking guy? Don't you think he would have smiled and laughed while watching the antics of children running and giggling while they play, while they tell Jesus stories or jokes? And knowing my grandchildren, kids can say the darndest things to those they trust and love. So how about when Jesus met Zacchaeus, the wealthy tax collector? Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus from where he stood amongst the crowd. He had to shimmy up a, sycam a, sy a sycamore fig tree. It's written that Zacchaeus was not of a tall stature, probably had short legs. I don't know about you, but I see him with a body that may be considered somewhat portly, maybe not having the best athletic physique. I'd like to think that Jesus had a bit of a smile on his face or even choked back a laugh when he came over to Zacchaeus, who was perched in amongst the branches, a precarious hole, struggling to stay on a branch. Jesus asks him to immediately come down, for he must stay at Zacchaeus' house. Watching Zacchaeus hurriedly come down from the tree may have been a moment of entertainment if the descent was not overly graceful. We know that God, almighty, eternal, all-powerful, has a sense of humor. Just look at creation, perfectly designed. And as the Bible tells us, we have been made in God's image, hence there's no doubt that we have a sense of humor. It also makes sense that Jesus, as the Son of God who shares God's characteristics, would also have a humorous side to him. Jesus must have had a captivating personality to keep the attention of crowds for days and the steadfast loyalty of his disciples for three years. In addition to being a riveting teacher whose words brought life, he was likely the kind of personality that was just fun to be around. He understood human emotions, of which humor is a fundamental part. There's a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to build, a time to tear down. There's a time to dance, a time to sing, a time to laugh. Proving to us that God has given each one of us a sense of humor, a part of what defines us as children of God. I found this poem written by Linda Maynard entitled, A Smiling, Joyful You. Today I saw a picture of you with a smile on your face. My heart became joyful. I felt filled with loving grace. So many times you've been remembered with expression full of pain, as if the thought of portraying you happy would somehow be a shame. Surely as a baby you giggled and filled your mother's heart with joy, and there must have been some mischief too as you grew to be a boy. I tried just to imagine you at play or happily climbing a tree. At twelve you were when you amazed the teachers, it must have set your heart to glee. When you became a man and others gathered in curious fascination, I picture your handsome face filled with wit and absolute jubilation. That first miracle you performed quietly at the wedding festivities records a time of merriment in your amazing life's activities. 
those very solemn images have been depicted a million times, it's true. But I'm so glad that I can now envision a smiling, joyful you. Study. Actually, a footnote to the previous story. Uh -oh. So the two children, toward in a way, when they were little, they only had one bedroom in their house. So toward slept in a regular bed, but apparently away slept in a manger. People of God, did you hear about the lowest bid contractor? Actually, the fellow who painted the roof of this church. Yeah? Well, before he painted the roof, he diluted the paint, watered it down three times before applying the paint to the church roof. Well, the first rain wash the roof clean. What happened then? Well, the minister called the contractor into the church and gave him a stern talking to and sent him away, saying, What do you need today? Repaint and thin no more. Our, section, our second scripture reading is taken from Genesis, uh, chapter 17, 18, and 21, though selected verses. And I will be reading from the message. In chapter 17, God said to Abraham, I'll bless Sarah. Yes, I'll give her a son by, I'll give you a son by her. How, oh, how I'll bless her. Nations will come from her. Kings of nations will come from her. What does Abraham do? He fell flat on his face. Then he laughed, thinking, Can a hundred-year-old man father a son? And can Sarah, at 90 years, have a baby? Your wife Sarah will have a baby, a son. Name him Isaac, which means laughter. In chapter 18, God appears again to Abraham while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent. It was the hottest part of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing. 
he ran from his tent to greet them and bowed before them. The men said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? He said, in the tent. One of them said, I'm coming back about this time next year. When I arrive, your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent opening just behind the man. Abraham and Sarah were old by this time, very old. Sarah was far past the age for having babies. Sarah laughed within herself. An old woman like me get pregnant with this old man of a husband? An old woman like me? Is anything too hard for God? So in chapter 21, God visited Sarah exactly as he said he would. God did to Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and gave Abraham a son in his old age. And at the very time, God had said. Sarah said, God has blessed me with laughter, and all who get the news will laugh with me. Norman Cousins wrote, Laughter is a form of internal jogging. It moves your internal organs around. It enhances respiration. It is the igniter of great expectations. So talk about great expectations. A woman, 90 years old, a husband close to 100, are about to be parents for the first time. And right away, God lets them know it's going to be a boy. No gender reveal party required. They laugh. Was it initially a hilarious laugh? Roll around the ground, tears streaming down your face type of laugh? Was it a nervous, yeah right, type of laugh, a bit cynical? Was it a laugh of faith, joyous, amazing, hallelujah laugh? Or was it a laugh of doubt? Hmm, I'm not sure about this. How can this be possible? type of laugh. What would you do if God suddenly appeared before you and told you there was going to be a miraculously, miraculous and joyous event, one that will affect your entire way of life? And exactly one year later, a miraculous and joyous event does occur, just as God said it would. A beautiful baby boy, Isaac was his name. Sarah laughs again. Any doubt of faith suddenly disappearing, joy fills her heart. She laughs, and I'm thinking Abraham shares in her laughter too. God's plan, a promise that was so unbelievable, a promise that was bigger than Abraham and Sarah, a plan that required letting go of control laughing and learning to be patient and to trust. Let us be reminded that God is the one in control. At times, yeah, things just don't go as we plan, the way we want them to be. There may be a cynical, doubtful laugh, and you know what? That's okay. God knows what's in our hearts. The results, when we wait, we trust and listen and put our faith in God. When we let God be the one in control, the results just might be wonder and joy and laughter. Someone wrote these words, I ask God to give me happiness. God said, no, I give you blessings. Happiness is up to you. God gives us plenty of reasons to rejoice and to laugh. So today, even if it's for a brief moment, turn on God's gift of humor and laughter. Take time to be funny. Rejoice in the Lord. Let laughter explode and have fun with God's word. For laughter is healing, gives strength to the meek. The weak. God loves to see smiles, for they lift up the meek. Take time to be silly. It's good for the soul. Too many are somber, grabbing control. 
Let go, let God's love wash over your soul. Heavenly transcendence, oh my soul, transcendence can be your life's goal. Old Sarah and Abram, a child they laughed, but God's angels promised and she birthed Isaac. In Hebrew, that's laughter. Go check if you want. Genesis 17 is where it's found. For humor is holy. It sanctifies life, replenishes hope, and oft softens advice. It undercuts sorrow, deflates haughty pride, so smile and hang on, and rejoice in life's ride. A pastor was speaking to a group of second graders about the resurrection of Jesus. When one student asked, what did Jesus say right after he came out of the grave? The pastor explained, well, the Gospels don't tell us what he said. Oh, but the hand of the little girl shot up. I know what he said. He said, ta-da! <laughs> Our lives overflow with good gifts, which come from God. Out of the goodness we enjoy, let us present our offering to God with thankfulness and generosity. Let us pray. Living God, we offer our gifts today in hopeful gratitude. Bless these gifts and use them to increase the goodness enjoyed by those in need. Bless our lives that through our relationships, Others will be touched by the hope we know in Christ Jesus and find their lives blessed by his love and mercy. Amen. So amid the laughter and the celebration of this day, it's good that we pause and remember that many carry burdens that need not be carried alone. Let us pray. God of grace, God of love and laughter, we thank you that we are so wondrously created and that we are made for relationship with you and with one another. We thank you for laughter with family, friends, and loved ones. We thank you for the laughter of children and the song it creates in our hearts. By your great unending love, you inspire in us spirit of imagination and creativity. Help us to use that spirit to play more, to laugh more, and to create beauty in every way possible. Remind us to laugh out loud, for doing so will heal some of the wounds within us. Not all, but some. God, we pray for those who cannot find their laughter today, for those who are grieving or suffering illness of body, mind, or spirit. For those who are lonely and in need of someone to share their time and friendship. For those who have not yet moved into the season and spirit of Easter and find themselves stuck in the gloom of Good Friday. And for families who have lost everything and for lives destroyed because of war, for those who are faced with impossible choices. May these and the troubles of all your people be soothed, blessed, and comforted by your holy presence. May we each find the laughter within us that sets our spirits free. And in that freedom, may we take your love into every part of our lives. These and all the prayers of our hearts we offer now in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father.
let us stand and join our voices singing, Sing Your Joy. Sing your joy, proclaim God's glory, rise and sing, the morning has come. Bless the God and praise of creation, song of the earth, the light from heaven, God is alive. Hallelujah. The earth is filled with rejoicing, light and might, the wonder of God. Christ has triumphed, risen forever, joy of our heart, and hope of our dreaming, God is alive. teacher was walking around observing the classroom of children while they were drawing pictures. As she got to one girl who was working diligently, asked what the drawing was. The girl replied, I'm drawing God. The teacher paused and said, but no one knows what God looks like. Without looking up from her drawing, the girl replied, they will in a minute. The laughing one calls us together so we, so we could share in the laughter of life. The laughing one sends us out to carry the joy of life and love to the world. Go out to laugh, to live, to love. And when you hear a good joke, remember that sharing is a great thing. May the God of surprises bring smiles and joys to the everyday and the ordinary. May the God of love be seen in all we do and say, go forth rejoicing, for the good work has just begun. Amen. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Let us join our voices as we sing our final song. This song, a simple one. We're going to be singing it four times, and each time the song gets faster, so get ready. Trees are 
go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. Will you go out with joy? You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will you go out with joy. This song. Raindrops and roses and whiskers and kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with string. These are a few of my favorite things. Green colored ponies and crisp apple strudel, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles. Wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings, these are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so Dresses and blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into spring. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember. 